ProtonMail and Huawei, a relationship made in privacy hell. The news broke on the ever-infamous Bloomberg site that Huawei and ProtonMail were in talks to create a partnership that would offer ProtonMail as the de facto email app for all Huawei phones going into the future. Listed in the article are quotes from ProtonMail's own CEO, Andy Yen, but I'll also be pulling from an argument I had with ProtonMail's Twitter account on the morning the news broke. This one is going to be fun. ProtonMail's own CEO is quoted in the article as saying, you have to be careful with China because, and I quote, you never really know who you're working for. This stands in complete contrast to the Twitter account saying that it is in a partnership with Huawei. China has a legal requirement for companies operating within China to create a Communist Party representative council within the company to handle the relationship between the company and China. It also requires any company handling the data of Chinese citizens to offer timely and complete access to said data to Chinese authorities. I'm going to be reading from a blog post, the uh, China Law blog, but the China Law blog is actually pretty straightforward about how this works. This is a quote from the blog post. China's cybersecurity law took effect last year, and it requires critical information infrastructure operators, or CIIOs, to store personal information and important data collected and generated within the territory of the PRC. Whether a network operator is a CIIO typically depends on its industry and how much a data breach would harm the public interest. Network operators in industries like public communication and information service providers, energy, finance, and public services are more likely to be considered CIIOs. Note that ProtonMail would be considered a communication and information service provider or a public service provider as well under the CIIO designation. That designation actually is decided upon by the Communist Party of China and the regulatory body and bodies therein, so it's not like Proton Mail gets a choice on whether they receive that designation. China is also in the process of establishing rules for cross border transmitting of personal information and important data via draft measures for security assessment of cross border transfer of personal information and important data and draft guidelines for data cross-border transfer security assessment. Under the existing drafts, the measures and the guidelines will apply to any company that is a network operator engaged in domestic operations. The term network operator is, is defined to include any person or entity that owns and manages any network and also networks of service providers, including email providers. That was my quote, not the blog's. If a company uses its internal network for its internal company operations and uses its company website to provide information to its customers, and this system and website are owned and managed by its foreign parent, the foreign parent company is a network operator. Under the guidelines, domestic operation means providing products or services within China. Sounds a little vague, doesn't it? A foreign network operator that is not registered in China but provides products or services to customers in China is engaged in domestic operation and will be subject to China's cross-border data transfer requirements. The guidelines also set, set forth how to determine whether a foreign company is engaged in domestic operation. The factors that will lead to such a finding include using the Chinese language, settling payments with RMB, and delivering or distributing products or services to Chinese citizens or companies. If one or more of these exist, a foreign company will be deemed to be engaging in domestic operation and therefore will be required to conduct a security assessment before engaging in any cross-border transfer of personal information and important data. But a network operator located in China that provides only products or services to foreign entities and whose operation does not involve any personal information of Chinese citizens or important data will not be considered to be a domestic operation and therefore will not be subject to China's cross-border data transfer rules. Obviously, if you have your app on every single Huawei phone in China, you're going to be dealing with Chinese citizen data, so they would definitely be considered a domestic operator. There's no context, no loopholes. You operate in China, the data is theirs. ProtonMail's own social media representatives said that they are a Swiss company, they don't have to abide by Chinese law. Pretty much spitting in the face of even the most rudimentary understanding of international law. The company I've been depending on for years for private storage and email, a company that I've used quite some time to discuss sensitive topics with journalists, dissidents, and activists both inside and outside of China, is in talks with Huawei to enter the Chinese market. All specific privacy concerns I very explicitly mentioned were ignored or replied to with canned, copy-pasted statements. 
China is currently surveilling every last one of their millions of citizens, installing a social credit system that invades every crevice of their personal lives to store their digital identity and score them based on, among many other things, their threat to the current authoritarian regime. That concern? Unanswered. China is currently using their surveillance apparatus, built in part by companies like Huawei and Tencent, to imprison over 1 million Uyghur Muslim, Muslims in concentration camps. Huawei has offices in Xinjiang with technical expertise aplenty. That concern? Unanswered. Chinese law requires companies that are explicitly storing data belonging to Chinese citizens to have that data hosted domestically and to offer up said data to relevant authorities at the request of the government in a timely manner. This agreement with Huawei would put them under the scope of that law. That concern? Dodged and unanswered. Chinese law requires companies with a large footprint in China to maintain a physical location domestically, while another law requires companies with more than a certain, fairly low number of employees in China to create and maintain a Communist Party internal cell, to act as a party regulatory body within the company, and to communicate requirements from the party to the company. That concern? Unanswered. Proton Mail insists that they don't now and never will have a physical location. They are also insisting that because the company is located in Switzerland, Chinese law doesn't apply to them. That's a level of naivety that indicates outright malicious dishonesty instead of ignorance to me. While speaking in complete circles, they've ignored every statement on China's concentration camps and adversarial relationship with privacy and security, and have insisted on using fallacious argument techniques to dodge questions and concerns and make statements so naive that it just can't be ignorance. They've constructed countless straw man arguments going back to the same tired canned responses even after the straw man was burned. We're a Swiss company, we don't have to abide by Chinese law. We won't have a physical location there, so we don't have to answer to them. We'll just flip them the bird the same way we did to Russia. As someone who is more and more concerned with privacy and human rights, and as a China watcher, I'm incredibly concerned with the explicit partnership of a company that is an outed arm of Chinese intelligence working with a supposed privacy-centric email provider that has been used by activists and dissidents for years. A partnership with Huawei is spitting in the face of privacy and human rights activists, and the feigned naivety and disingenuous response by Proton Mail has me concerned as well. The response wasn't even remotely transparent and dodged incredibly important issues by reposting canned responses that didn't remotely addre address the listed concerns. I'm issuing a call for everyone who sees this video or the thread on Twitter to put pressure on Proton Mail using the hashtag delete Proton Mail and making your voices known. We need to stand for privacy, security, and transparency and stand against those who have made it their mission to erode those standards. Tell Proton Mail to put morals over money. Demand they retract the deal and issue a strong reaffirmation of their stance on privacy, security, and transparency, especially with respect to China. If they don't, I'll issue an update with the recommended alternative to Proton Mail, and will be canceling all of my paid and unpaid accounts with Proton Mail as well. Take a stand. Thank you.